This is Larry Russell. This is the second of two videos that I'm doing on how long-term capital gains taxes are calculated. And in this case, I'm going to go over a tax forms example that I've made up. In the first video, I went over conceptually how long-term capital gains taxes are taxed for both people that are uh, single or married filing jointly. I will review that in a moment, but first let me construct the example. In this particular case, um, we're talking about a retired couple that have a larger family home that they no longer need and they already own a vacation home and what they going to do is sell their family home, not buy another uh, replacement home for that, but downsize into a vacation home that they already own. The What will end up happening is the total taxable income uh, using 2016 tax rates that will show up in, in Form 1040 will be 140000 That will be composed of $35,000 worth of ordinary income plus 100,000 worth of long-term capital gains, plus 5,000 worth of qualified dividends. In this column here, I'm just going to summarize a few points about the ordinary income. In reality, they have $55,600 worth of ordinary taxable income sources, such as wages, salary, etc. But subtracted from that are their exemptions, which are, would be 8,000 for two exemptions. And in this case, I'm also reducing the, uh, the, the, the taxable income amount by the standard deduction of, six, of 12,600, which would be applicable in 2016. This point is made here simply because in some circumstances, people might have itemized deductions that are a lot higher, and they have the effect of reducing the amount of actual taxable ordinary income. But in this particular case, we're going to, this example, we're going to have 35000 worth of taxable ordinary income that's subject to ordinary graduated income tax rates. In this long-term capital gains taxes column, we're going to assume that the home that they sell, they have net sales proceeds after costs of 750000 Now, many years ago, they acquired this house for 150000 That's the tax basis for the house. So the difference between the two amounts is 600000 That's what would be subject potentially to long-term capital gains taxes. However, and this is also another part of the example, just to note that if you follow the tax rules properly and you can look them up and read them in IRS publications, uh, you can take a $500,000 married filing jointly exclusion on a, re a residential property that you sell. Now, for single people, that's a quarter million dollar exclusion, but it's actually very advantageous and very useful. In this particular situation, that takes the $600,000 long-term capital gain and reduces it by $500,000 down to $100,000. Now, also, I'm noting here and including this example, they have $5,000 worth of qualified dividends so that the total amount of, of, uh, of taxable income that's subject to long-term capital gains will be $105,000. Now, here's a conceptual review from the first video that explains how the taxes are calculated. In this case, we're, this is an example for married taxpayers. We're using 2016 tax rates. They have 105000 worth of long-term capital gains, and they have ordinary income of $35,000. So, if you look at this arrow here, this illustrates what the tax rates are. Now, first, let's ignore this down here and just go from zero up to 75,300. This is the break point between a 0% long-term capital gains tax rate and a 15% long-term capital gains tax rate. Now, if you're so lucky as to have uh, such high income that you hit this break point up here, your, your long-term capital gains tax rate above 466,950 would move up to 20%. But in this case, we're just keeping a simple example and, you, and, sh and showing what happens with the 0 and the 15% tax rate. Like I said, if they had no other ordinary income, then the first 75300 would be subject to a 0% tax. But the way the tax system works is that ordinary income will act kind of like a plunger to push out the 
long-term capital gains uh, taxes into slightly higher tax uh, rates, even though indeed the, the rates are relatively low. So 35,300 begins to occupy some of this range between zero and 75,300. So how you actually calculate the overall taxes is up here. 35,300 ordinary income would be equivalent in 2016 tax rates to $4,328 in income taxes. And you just get that from the tax tables. Now, to calculate the long-term capital gains, you take the break point here and you subtract the $35,000. What remains of this range is then $40,300 here. And that's taxed at a 0% tax rate or has no taxes applicable. To calculate the remainder from here to here, what you do is you take the total amount, $105,000, you subtract this amount here, which was taxed at 0%, so that's 105 minus 40,300 will equal 64,700. That'll be taxed at a 15% long-term capital gains tax rate. So using 2016 tax rates, that is $9,705 in federal long-term capital gains taxes. And if you take this $9,705 and divide it by 105,000, the effective long-term capital gains tax rate is roughly 9.2%. Now, I'm going to move on to um, the, the tax forms. And the first one I'm going to look at is um, 2000, sorry, is the, is the Form 1040. Now, you'll note here I'm using 2016 tax rates because I have them available, but what we're looking at here is a 2015 tax form. Um, taxation is always like a year behind because in 2016, um, we're still dealing with 2000, filing for 2015. Anyway, and I don't have all the other details that, would, that you would fill in here. I'm just filling in the relevant uh, areas. This is the $55,600 uh, wages salaries. This is the ordinary income. This is these, the, the, the dividends that they have, all of which are, are long-term capital gains. And this is the capital gain, the net $100,000 capital gain that flows from other tax forms. I'm not going to look at the uh, detailed tax forms in this. Um, so when you add these amounts up here, uh, let's give it a chance. There we go. Add these amounts together. What you end up with is... $166,600. That carries to the second page as your adjusted gross income. This is where the itemized deduction or the standard deduction gets inserted and then subtracted from this amount here. And in this case, we're using the standard deduction for 2016 for a married couple of $12,600. So that will reduce after the, uh, the standard deduction is taken the resulting amount will be $148,000. Uh, After that, one takes out the exemptions, which is another $8,000 for two people, and the resulting amount is taxable income of $140,000. The combined, the combined tax is $14,033. Now, the question is, how did one get there from the tax forms? Well, if you actually, here's where we need to go, is... You, f you do these calculations by going to the, the, the instructions for ten the Form 1040, and you look for the worksheet for line 44. Now, obviously, if you're using a CPA or using automated taxation, this is already being calculated for you. So what we're really looking at here is, is what a person who is doing their taxes by hand would have to do, but it also helps you to understand how it's actually done. So... Here's the $140,000 that will that will transfer in, and also note that these blue uh, annotations here are do not come with the form. These are annotations that I added to try to make this a little bit more clear if you want to study this. So you have $140,000 worth of total taxable ordinary income and capital gains. This is com uh, composed of of, of $5,000 and a worth of qualified dividends plus $100,000 worth of capital gains. And anytime you see an annotation that says calculation, it's just a calculation. I've already explained conceptually how this works, but if you 
pause the video and begin to study this form, you'll see how it actually works, even though it's rather confusing uh, unless you give yourself some time. Anyway, what happens here is that you add these two, these two lines together and it, it's 105,000. And then what, what this does is this is, gets the total amount that would be taxed as a long-term capital gain. And then that's subtracted from this amount to get 35,000. So now, and I won't go over all the individual details, but you can begin to see some of the numbers that are the same. This is the break point here. This is the amount uh, that is ordinary income, so that gets excluded. This is the difference between this and this. And let's ignore these calculations here. What's really going on right by, just so you know right here, is if indeed the, the amount of capital gain might exceed this rather high break point between 15% between and 20% uh, long-term capital gains, this logic here is testing for that. So, but like I said, I'm not going to go into the individual details. But now, down here, you recognize from the from the example I did. Here's sixty-four thousand. Uh, sorry, this is this is the sixty-four thousand uh, seven hundred dollars remaining that's subject to fifteen percent tax, and the amount up here is the amount that was excluded. So, this is the area that calculates the twenty percent long-term capital gains. However, in this situation, since we haven't exceeded that particular breakpoint, obviously the tax on that is zero. So this line here is the amount that we saw transferred to the um, Form 1040, and that's composed of adding this number and this number, and the ordinary income tax is on the $35,000, and that comes to this. What this amount down here does is it's, it assumes that all of the income you had, the total 140000 was just taxed as ordinary income. So that's 26543 And it says down here, the usual way it's done with this is it says to, to enter the smaller of. But this allows us also to see that the difference between this and this is a total of, let's get rid of that, is a total of... 12,510. This is the effective savings that one has uh, over ordinary income tax rates of being able to, to uh, pay taxes or long-term capital gains taxes on 105,000 out of this 140,000. So in summary, that's the way long-term capital gains taxes work. Not simple, not easy, but once you understand it, uh, actually, it will actually encourage you to go find a software package uh, to do your own taxes or uh, find a competent CPA that also uses one. So thank you very much for listening.